Hello, hello, so ladies and gentlemen. Are, are you ready? ready? No, okay. Yeah. Give me a minute. <clears throat> okay, so let's get on with this. Hello, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Nixarov's Food Log. So, continuing our journey of Europe, we have landed in Denmark, and we're going to make a beautiful Danish breakfast. So, in a Danish breakfast, we have four things. Brubrod, which is rye bread. Olebrod, which is a porridge made out of rye bread. Rundsteier, which is bread rolls stuffed with cream cheese or jam. And, to finish it off, we have Wienerbrod. Don't know what that is? That's what the world calls a Danish. So, we start with the Wienerbrod. For this I have about 480 grams of flour, in which I add 375 grams of cold butter, as cold as possible. You're supposed to cut the butter to the size of a kidney bean, or smaller. Now, we combine this, but ever so slightly. This is a quicker way of making puff pastry, almost exclusive to Denmark and the other Scandinavian countries. With this we add about 100 grams of sugar, salt, about 10 grams, and 10 grams of ground cinnamon. And lightly mix everything together once again. Now we make a well in the center and pour in about 150 milliliters of milk, 150 milliliters of heavy cream, and we crack in two eggs. Bring it all slightly together and crumble in 30 grams of yeast. And now make this into a dough. Dust the surface with some flour, bring out all your dough. Once it all comes together, scrape all the sides, wrap it up in some plastic. And now we chill this in the fridge for about four whole hours. We make an icing that goes on top of the wiener ball. So for this, we use 100 grams of icing sugar and make sure you sieve it properly. And now to this icing sugar, we add about 50 milliliters of milk, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla essence. You can add any essence you want, mix it all together. When the icing is nice and smooth, you take it out in another bowl and chill this in the refrigerator. So the next thing we make is the cherry jam. On a high flame, we put a good amount of cherries, half the amount of sugar, and about one-fourth the amount of water, and let it all cook. Now the cherries have been halved and the pip has been removed. Cherries are quite tart and sweet at the same time, so we don't need any lime juice in this. Put in your sugar thermometer and wait for it to reach 105. The jam is quite done, and now we decant it into a jar. So four hours have passed and the pastry for the Wienerbrod has risen quite okay. So it's time to give it three falls like we did for the puff pastry. Though this time, unlike the French breakfast where we made the croissant out of the same puff pastry, we're not going to wait between each fold. We're going to give three folds one after the other and then rest it. So let's start the glamorous work of giving it the folds. We wrap this once again and chill it in the fridge for 30 minutes. This pastry is chilled and rested. Let me just split this in half. There we go. If you notice, you can see the amazing amount of layers that have been formed 
we take the first half and roll it out to form a long rectangle. By the way, I forgot, but we need to keep this in the fridge before it melts. So just give me a second. When you roll it thin enough, take the edges off, they're irregular. We cut strips, not cut out, but just cut strips on the sides and repeat the same. Now we spread some of our lovely cherry jam in the center. It's important to make sure that your jam has cooled down absolutely. Let's fold these over to make braids. So, with these offcuts, I've made little mini Danish rolls and I'm going to put some dried cranberries in them. Now that this has puffed up a little bit, not too much, we have to put it in an oven for about 15 to 18 minutes at 200 degrees. But before we do that, we must egg wash it. So now, 15 minutes in the oven at 200 degrees. So now that the wiener bolt are done, let's put some icing on these. Now we move on to Rubrod, the star of Denmark. It's rye bread. We heat up about 400 milliliters of water on a very low flame. To this water, we add 20 grams of yeast. Crumble it in and let it dissolve. Make sure the water is not too hot or boiling or else you'll kill the yeast. And also make sure that when you add the yeast, the pan is off the flame. Now we pour this water into a bowl. and add about 150 milliliters of buttermilk. To this, we add one tablespoon of golden syrup. Now this syrup is what's going to give the bread a soft, sweet texture. To this, we add 30 grams of sunflower seeds, 30 grams of flax seeds, and 30 grams of white sesame seed. We can also add cracked rye if we want. 165 grams of whole wheat flour. This bread has absolutely no white flour. And we add 375 grams of rye flour. And on top of that, a good helping of salt. And then we bring everything together. Now we tip this dough on a surface. We don't flour the surface, it's not really all that sticky. And knead the dough for 10 whole minutes. And once it's come together and it's quite nice and smooth, we keep it back in the bowl, cover it with some cling film. And now we set it aside to rise for two hours. So there are two ways of making rye bread. One way is by using sourdough and the other way is by mixing everything together and letting it rise for about two hours. Now, what is the difference in these two? Sourdough is pre-fermented dough, but it is fermented for four days. And then the fifth day, half the sourdough is used with the rest of the ingredients to let the bread rise. This gives the rye bread a distinct sour taste. I can see my cameraman and my director waiting with bated breath to see if I take four days with this recipe or just four hours. And two hours have passed now. 
and our rye bread dough has also doubled in size. When you don't use the sourdough, it can be a little difficult for the bread to rise. So now, if you pay a little attention to this dough, it's not stretchy and elastic here like the other doughs. In fact, it's very crumbly. This is exactly how the rye bread dough is supposed to be. You put it in a pan and flatten it out. There is a special Danish pan that the Danes use, which is perfectly rectangular and not tapering like this pan. But it's very hard to find that pan anywhere outside Denmark. So make sure you flatten the top completely and make sure you fill about between half and three quarters of the entire pan. So now that this is done, we will cover it with cling film and leave it aside for about half an hour to 45 minutes till it rises and comes to the top. So our bread has risen appropriately. It's nearly come up to the top. With a skewer, wooden or metal as I'm using, we make incisions in the bread. And we put this in the oven for one hour, 10 minutes at 200 degrees. As we take this rye bread out, still quite hot, we put it in a plastic bag and seal it and leave it there to cool down completely because rye bread tends to be very hard and crusty on the outside. So to reduce the toughness of the crust, we put it in a plastic bag so that all the steam condenses and makes it nice and moist. We leave this aside until it completely cools down. So time to check on our bagged rubro. Well, seems to be quite good. So now it's time to make the olibro. Olibro is actually just a porridge of rye bread and non-alcoholic beer with some butter and cream mixed into it. Olibro is mostly just eaten at breakfast, exclusively. What we do first is cut our rye bread. Let's put all of that into a glass bowl. Fill that up with some non-alcoholic beer. Let's just push that in. A pan on medium heat and in goes beer and the bread mixture. Now it's time to blend this. So when the bread has turned to mush, we add in a little bit of the cream, 100 grams of cream. And many people might just add another can of non-alcoholic beer instead of cream, but I feel the cream gives it a more porridgey texture. Now we take it off the heat and add a good blob of butter to it and blend that in. And the olibro is done. Now we move on to making runsteier. Runsteier are bread rolls. They can be made in either whole wheat or just plain whole flour. What I'm doing is using a combination of 200 grams of regular flour and 200 grams of whole wheat flour. 400 grams of flour in total, 25 grams soft butter. And then we rub this butter in and let the flour absorb all of it. Now we add about one teaspoon of salt. Now let's make our well and add in about 300 milliliters of milk. Make it slightly pasty and crumble in 30 grams of yeast. And then bring all of this together. We tip this on a flat surface and knead it till it's nice and combined. Once the dough comes together, we put it back in the bowl, cover with cling film. And now we leave this aside to rise for one hour. No, actually half an hour. That gives me some relief. <laughs> So it's been half an hour and our dough for the Rusteiker has risen quite well. Take it out. Now we divide it in 
half and then quarters and we divide each quarter into half. Lightly flour the surface, take one at a time, and roll it to form a bun. And now we keep this aside for half an hour to prove. Now that these bread rolls have risen quite well, it's time to egg wash them and then put on some poppy seeds or black sesame seeds. We take a sharp knife and make a quick incision. Now we put this in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at 230 degrees. So there you have it, a complete Danish traditional breakfast at your fingertips. And now that I'm done with this, I can finally go back to sleep. And don't you come and wake me up there, boy. <laughs> well, well, bekommen.